Is XRP better than Bitcoin because it's faster and cheaper to use? How can you diversify into gold without messing around with gold derivatives? And can you use crypto like a bank and make automatic payments to your bill providers? Those are a few of your questions you've asked me and I'm gonna answer them now, so stay tuned. All right, welcome back guys. So today I am going to answer your questions. I take these questions from the comments that you leave down below and I answer them right here for everybody to hear. I'm gonna go ahead and feature your questions. So please leave your questions and comments down below. I'm gonna grab the best ones and I'm gonna answer them live. We're gonna get right into it. All right, so the first question is asked by Crypto God, and he says, have you done any research on Ripple XRP? They are working behind the scenes with the IMF. Bitcoin is too slow, too expensive to use as transactions, and it uses too much energy. XRP is cheap, fast, and uses no energy. What are your thoughts? All right, so Crypto God, I'm gonna answer that for everybody now. Uh, yeah, I've done a lot of uh, research on XRP. As a matter of fact, I wrote about a 15-page uh, research report on XRP over two years ago that went out to my members, and um, we did really good with XRP. We made a lot of money on it. I think we bought it for around 17 cents and sold it around 325. Did really good. Um, it depends on what you're looking at XRP for to determine if it's good, but specifically in regards to your question here, uh, that Bitcoin is too slow, too expensive, and it uses too much energy. That's why XRP is better. He says fat, XRP is cheap, fast, and uses no energy. All right, so Bitcoin is slower and more expensive, and it does use more energy. Yes, you're absolutely right. Is being cheaper, faster, and no energy, is that the primary thing that we're trying to optimize for? Because if it's supposed to be just faster and cheaper, why not just use PayPal? Why not just use Venmo? Venmo works pretty good right now. It's not about being faster and cheaper. To me, the revolution is that for the first time in human history, we have a way to hold value that's censorship resistant and I can transfer it with nobody stopping, blocking, and preventing it. So it's censorship resistant. To me, that's the primary feature. That's the revolution. That's why I'm so excited about it. And so, yes, Bitcoin is slower and it's more expensive because it's decentralized. Nobody can stop it, block it, prevent it. Um, XRP, on the other hand, is way faster. And if that's the feature that you're looking for, then, then yes, it ticks those boxes. For me, um, uh, the reason, like I said, I'm excited is, is for those other things that XRP doesn't have. So those are my thoughts. I have a lot more thoughts, but that's what I'm going with for today. Hopefully that makes sense. Go ahead and leave me comments down below and let me know what you think. All right, question number two today is asked by Andres, and he says, thanks for the video. Wonder, what are your thoughts? Is it good to be in debt in fiat, euro dollar, in a couple of years with the fixed rate, uh, you will be in a good position when inflation strikes? provided you are now in Bitcoin or gold. And so you'll be able to pay off your fiat debt, no problems. Now, that's an interesting question. So um, if you have fiat, euros or dollars, and inflation goes up, but you're hedged into gold or, or Bitcoin, you'll be able to pay off those debts easier. Yeah, you, you potentially could. That's basically what the governments are doing. Through inflation, they're able to pay off their debts easier. They're able to inflate those debts away. And so anytime you play with debt, it can be good and bad debt. There's good ways and bad ways to do it. It can really help you build, but it can also be destructive at the same time. Kind of like fire, right? Fire can do a lot of good things, but it can also do a lot of bad things. And that's kind of how debt is. So Theoretically, um, yes, you can do what you're saying. If you had a, a mortgage on your house, right, that was fixed at a very low interest rate in fiat, and we saw massive inflation, and then you had hedged in Bitcoin or gold that was de uh, deflationary, it'd be much easier for you to pay those debts off in the future if those things happen. That's a bunch of ifs. If you can get a good low rate, if we see inflation move up, if you have hedged in Bitcoin and gold, um, but if those things line up, then yeah, it, it totally works. And like I said, that's the governments are doing. So good job on that, Andres. All right, next question I have is from DP Priest, 1982. Hey, Mark, this is awesome stuff as always. Thank you very much. Um, I hear what you say about diversifying your portfolio across gold and Bitcoin. I'm in West Africa and cryptos are emerging investment for the young generation over here. 
it's cool to hear that uh, crypto is really moving uh, for the young generation in Africa even, right? However, how can we tap into gold as a hedge without necessarily investing in derivatives of gold? Okay, well, there's a few ways. First of all, there are some gold-backed cryptocurrencies that you could take a look at. So there's a few cryptocurrencies, they're almost stable coins, where they peg the, the cost of the coin or the price of the coin to a particular amount of gold. And so by buying that coin, you're actually buying gold. So there's a way to do that through cryptocurrencies. Um, and that would be on a, like a one-to-one -one ratio. It's not a derivative of it. Um, the other way is to take physical delivery of it. Now, in Africa, you may not want to do that, depending on where you live in Africa but a lot of people own gold. So of course, taking physical delivery is a way that you can do that without being in the derivatives market. Another way that I play gold um, that I really like, um, I buy physical gold uh, for more of a chaos in, in, in you know, insurance hedge, but for more explosive upside on gold, I like to buy gold mining stocks. So that's another way that you could tap into the gold market without having to play on the derivatives, but still get upward pressure on that price, uh, upward exposure to the price. Hopefully that makes sense. And uh, good job over there in Africa. Hopefully uh, the young generation keep pushing it. I know um, Africa is a really big place that it's growing. All right, uh, the next question. And this is from 10XRP, another XRP fan. I don't need a loan, but I need a bank because all my utility providers and mortgage only accept payments from a bank. So until these debtors accept crypto, we will continue needing banks. Open to suggestions, good video. All right, 10XRP. So I admit, I think this was probably in, uh, in regards to a statement I made on one of the videos where I said, really, the only thing we need banks for is one, to store our money and two, to provide loans. That's what the average person uses a bank for. And if, with crypto, I can custody it myself. You know, not your coins, not your keys. So I can put my own funds onto my own um, hardware wallet and I can custody them myself. So I don't need a bank for that. All right, so that gets rid of that. The second one is I said we needed it for a... Um, a loan. He says he doesn't need a loan. What he really needs it for, which I didn't say, was paying bills, paying utility providers, mortgages, etc. So until they accept crypto, we'll need to continue um, needing banks. Well, yes. So uh, what you said here was key. So until, until these debtors accept crypto. So a lot of um, what I see going on in the industry is people just expecting way too much, way too soon. Uh, we need to be patient. You got to understand the lifetime, the cycle, the life cycle that it takes for new technologies to reach adoption, to reach scale. When you look at the internet, it took 15 years before we really started seeing any like online purchases, 17, 18 years before we had like mobile internet. So it'll come, just be patient. So until they take crypto, so you had that right. However, there's ways you can do it today. So what you could do is you could get a debit card, a credit card that pulls off of your crypto account. So you put your crypto in a wallet, you hook a credit card to that, and you just spend your Visa MasterCard, and every time you spend that, it debits directly from your crypto account. So you could do that, and you could pay directly all your bills from your crypto assets using a credit card. And that's another reason why people trying to compare Bitcoin to Visa or MasterCard doesn't make sense because Visa or MasterCard is just a payment system. Visa or MasterCard pulls money from your bank account and it could easily just pull money from your Bitcoin account, right? So comparing Bitcoin to MasterCard doesn't make sense. MasterCard's a payment rail that could work on Bitcoin equally like it could work on your, um, on your bank account. So you could just you do that. Another way is I know like there's other options coming out. I know Monarch Wallet, shout out to Monarch, um, is doing this where they're working on a way where they can actually auto debit directly from your crypto. Uh, you would basically put up a, a certain amount of crypto in an account that would be used for auto debits. And then they can auto debit directly to that mortgage or utility provider and pay in fiat, just like you're suggesting. So there's actually ways that you can do it right now today. Otherwise, um, as you said, until they accept it, so continue to wait. And we're gonna see that more and more and more. Getting rid of the banks is not gonna happen overnight. It's gonna take generations, lots and lots of generations. It's kind of like newspapers are a lot less relevant today because the internet's out there, but people still read the newspapers. Um, it's gonna take generations for that to go away. All right, good question, thank you. The next question I have is from Kyle Norley. Kyle says, thanks Mark. I've been familiar with the petrodollar for quite some time, but refreshers are always nice. I find Bitcoin amazing, but what about the second tier? Litecoin, Dash, Ethereum. Do you see long-term use cases? All right, Kyle, that's a good question. And actually, there's a few questions on the same line. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read them all together and I'm gonna answer them together. So I also got this question from MB. What do you think about altcoins versus Bitcoin? 
What should a beginner cryptocurrency investor buy? Same thing. Another one, Grungikal. I've seen that altcoins are cheaper and can do the exact same thing as Bitcoin, and they don't need Bitcoin to use anymore either. Wouldn't that make the price stagnant and the price of altcoins to raise? All right, so basically what all three are asking is, um, I talk a lot about Bitcoin. I talk about cryptocurrencies, but I talk a lot about Bitcoin and people want to know if there's still a market for altcoins. Are there long-term use cases um, and should a, in, in, a beginner investor buy them? So yes, I do. I do believe in a lot of the altcoins. Um, I am kind of a Bitcoin maximalist, maybe, but not really. Um, I really believe in Bitcoin. I really like what it stands for, but I believe there's a lot of use cases for altcoins as well. Um, I'm seeing some really interesting uses. Um, over a long enough time frame, will a lot of that move over to Bitcoin? Potentially. But as an investor, I see lots of opportunities to make money in the short term, mid term, and even long term. So some of the altcoins that I've bought might have been just so I can make money in the next one, you know, one year, and you know, I've made a few thousand percent. Now, if I'm investing because I believe you know, Bitcoin's gonna be the store of value to, 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 to rule the world, and that's different. So it really comes down to what you're looking for, what your thesis is, why you're buying. Um, if I'm looking at it just from an investor standpoint, I think the returns on altcoins can be, uh, will probably give us much better returns than Bitcoin can. So as an investor, I think make, uh, moving into altcoins makes a lot of sense. Uh, regarding this question is that, um, altcoins are cheaper and could do the exact same thing as Bitcoin, I would say absolutely not. I don't believe there's any other coin that can do the same thing as Bitcoin, not in the exact same way. Can they all transfer peer to peer? Sure, yes. But there's a big difference between all the other similarities. So no, not all. there's no other altcoins that are, that are cheaper that can do the same thing as Bitcoin. Um, so like I said, from an ideological standpoint, there's nothing that can do what Bitcoin can. I believe Bitcoin has a good chance of becoming a world reserve currency. And so being in that for the long term, in it for the, like I said, the ideology is a place to be. As an investor, I think the altcoins present awesome opportunities for us to make money. And I do believe there will be some long-term use cases. Uh, I, I think Ethereum is a, is a huge platform. We see the entire DeFi, decentralized finance being movement, uh, movement being built on Ethereum. There's lots and lots of other coins. There's privacy coins, um, prediction market coins, there's uh, storage coins, uh, there's you know uh, Internet of Things, uh, um, security coins. There's all kinds of coins doing all different types of things. Um, so that's it, that's what I got. Hopefully you like those questions. Like I said, leave questions in the comments down below. I try to grab a couple each week and I'll answer them for you on video. And that's it, to your success, I'm out.